Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. It's Monday, new week, new possibilities. Hope you guys are have had a great day, and hope you guys are excited about this week as much as I am. And you continuously move forward and try to prosper as much as you can with you and your loved ones and your friends. So let's get into it. Today's discussion, I will be talking about uh, GM closing down five plants within the Northern uh, America area. It's a sad state of affairs. And like I said, I won't get into the political aspects of it. It's just business at the end of the day. So let's really get into this. Now, with almost 15,000 jobs disappearing throughout the North American continent, GM, known as General Motors, has decided to close down five manufacturing plants. Now, please understand, I'm not making this video to, like I stated earlier, to get in any crazy political nonsense. That's really not my thing, because both sides, everybody has their own agenda, and you just have to figure out what your agenda is at the end of the day. So um, that's just that's just how it goes. That now this is just uh, you know, and that's just another thing is it's just easy to go that route in my opinion. You know, I'm on the left, I'm on the right, blah 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 blah. You know, people are losing their jobs, and there's nothing funny about that at all. And as you see this happening, there's nothing really that political about it at all. At the same time, because no matter if there's a Democrat or Republican uh, in the in the White House or running this, the the Congress or state doesn't matter you have a, you in the digital age you have a chance of losing your job it's just it's point blank and simple to that to that and i don't know why how anyone could look at it any other way but you're entitled to your opinion you know it's a free country right people losing their jobs and you know gm is calling this a quote unquote restructuring effort for their 2019 uh, objections and uh, bottom lines and all that good stuff but the plants will not be officially turned down t uh, tore down but they will cease production you know um, next year and it's going to be hit, hit in Michigan Ohio uh, Ontario uh, Canada Baltimore uh, Maryland area so it's going to hit uh, various parts of the United States of America and it's in uh, I'm sorry and Canada all at the same time you know and I make now I make this video to dismiss the notion that just because a company receives a huge quote unquote tax break, tax cut, doesn't you know, and and even if the company doesn't have a union, doesn't necessarily mean that they're always gonna keep jobs in the United States. You know, we all know that. If a corporation, no matter what the corporation is, decides to move um, especially the manufacturing or a lot of t in, in, in a sense great example today I was on uh, I, I was talking to somebody cu customer service and I could tell the gentleman was in India <laughs> you know you know of course he says his name is Peter but I know his name is not Peter but you know he's just he's just doing his job but I could tell that you know he wasn't in, in the United States you know so that's another thing. Call centers have been moving to the uh, other parts of the world for a long time. It's not just a lot of white collar jobs are being uh, virtually sent overseas at the same time. So it's not just blue collar jobs. But for all intents and purposes of this video, I'll stick to the blue collar aspects of this video. You know, but um, even if a company receives tax breaks, it doesn't have to deal with you. It doesn't it just there's just no guarantee, right? And you know, GM is really doing this, you know, in order for them just basically save six billion dollars by 2020 <laughs> you know once again ladies and gentlemen everything and i mean everything is centered around the almighty dollar <laughs> the bottom line ladies and gentlemen now gm still has a footprint in mid you know midwestern parts of the united states but like i always say if your only source of income comes from a job and outside of surviving you know for your money uh, you know money you know because we all need money to survive outside of that and you're not trying to create any sort of assets then you're playing the money game all wrong all wrong there's no other way to, for me to really say it you know you're not really playing the money game in the in the right way you know this is uh general motors the ceo maria barra you know and she came out in a statement saying that you know it's in a sense, she said that this is happening because, you know, they're trying to work with the um, United Auto, Auto Workers Association on a new deal and things of that nature. But I don't know why you have to cease production at these specific factories. People do not have their jobs with the new year coming. So after the holidays, essentially, they're screwed in order for you to work out a new deal. And we all know it's really money behind it. I'm not calling her the big, bad, evil CEO. It's a company. Companies are in business to make money. This is this is just a reality. 
You know, we we my generation, the millennial generation, and the in the, the the generation Z, they we all know that companies don't give a crap about us. We're just workers at the end of the day. So if you don't own it, you don't kill yourself over it. You just do the best you can, best job you can, and you move forward when you can. That's the the job market that we're in nowadays. That's why there's no such thing as loyalty. Just just get just get with the program. <laughs> you know, we're going into 2019. You know, we only have a couple more weeks left in 2019 now, and we still have in the majority of the American population living life like it's the 1950s and think that having a job is the only way to be, you know, whether you are working in the private sector, working um, your union employee, whether you're a government employee, you know, you're in the military. And if you are, thank you for your service, your continued service and your previous service. Thank you. But you know that, you know, with all that, the situation uh, we are left in is a vulnerable place if you fall in that category I just described without having a, a, some sort of a pension like a lot of military folks I know they have an earned pension that they well deserve or benefits for um, you know their sacrifices for the United States so they get VA benefits well deserved benefits I get it I totally understand it you know so they, that's that's what I consider the backup plan if you're getting gonna get that for the rest of your life still try to use that money and leverage it so that you can put it in other things to make more money and not just survive off of it if you can because everybody's situation is different you know so it's, it's not everything's not black and white you know if it was it would probably be a simpler world but it's not so let's move forward you know but at least people in this you know vulnerable situation and i know a lot of people out there who are in a vulnerable situation and will tell me that they're not in a vulnerable situation you know but it does you know because the question that i always ask myself you know uh, every day and I asked other people, like, if you was to lose all that, what, well, you know, what, what kind of financial position would you be in? You know, that's the question I ask myself every day. And that's what keeps me going. You know, who the Redskins picked for the new quarterback, because that seems to be the topic of the hour, means nothing and does nothing for me. It will never have any significant impact on my life and your life either if you're not working for him. Let's just be real with it at the end of the day. <laughs> And you see all these stores closing down on a regular basis because of, of the digital age and because, you know, malls are not the things that they used to be. I remember growing up, hey, here in Woodbridge, you know, Potomac Mills Mall was the place to be. Walking around there for hours, it was nothing. But nowadays, it's like, I don't want to do all that. I'm Amazon. Hey, Shopify. Click, click, click. <laughs> bring it to my house i do not the idea of sitting in traffic to get to a, a mall and pay for overpriced food and overpriced clothing when i know i can just go on my cell phone and do it and have it delivered to me maybe sometimes even the same day i've said it a bunch of times i'm going with that option there's nothing against the people that work at these stores and i feel bad for this these stores that are closing down but it's like i was at a real estate event uh the other day with my buddy and you know one of the um instructions were stating that hey they're turning a lot of malls into nowadays into apartments they're turning a lot of malls into hangouts for you know just more and more restaurants and apartments are going to be at the, these mega malls now not a bunch of retail stores it's just a thing of the past you know all these stores you see here they're closing down in 2019 it is not a it's not a game it's not a joke you know and I, and now i know most americans especially millennials and the younger generation you know the generation z a generation like my nieces and nephews you know i just went to my niece's graduation proud of her you know she's generation z so she knows she knows the deal they're, you know we're not stupid they're not stupid they know we know that manufacturing is not the wave of the future i don't care what part of the country you're in I don't care how you vote I don't care how you live we know that manufacturing is not the wave of the future <laughs> You know, no one can ever sell that to me. And I know nobody can sell that to my nieces and nephews and anybody else that falls in this category. Most of us know that the blue collar jobs of today and tomorrow are skilled trade positions, i.e. plumbers, electricians, welders, etc. and so forth. We all know that. We're not crazy. We know that. You know, but a lot of people just don't want to buy into it. <laughs> You know, I think most people know that and I and I have a lot of respect and admiration for people who work with their hands, you know, the utmost respect for blue collar workers. And that's why I say that if you're good at working with your hands, then go get a skilled trade and do and do right by your money. You know, it's it costs less money to get a skilled trade than it does a college degree. And the crazy thing is I saw I read today that in the United States there, you know, they're, they're projecting within the next 10 years, there's going to be all these skilled trade positions that are going to be available. But because the and this is another thing that that's bad in a lot of 
states, not all states, but most states in the United States of America, they don't really have um, vote tech classes, you know, vocational training classes as much as they used to. In a lot of states, like I, I know they have it in Pennsylvania, Indiana, Texas, and uh, Tennessee. I know they still have it there it's in, and they have relevant skilled trade programs there, but a lot of states don't have it and they don't put a lot, a lot of their money into those skilled trade programs. And that's why those jobs, a lot of times they just, they just, they just sit there and you know, they're not being taken advantage of by people. And these are, you know, you're a skilled trades worker, you're gonna make money. I've seen contractors, they might look like they got two cents to their name, but they got more money than most white collar workers put together. Okay, so that's just, I'm just calling it like it is. If you, you know, if you like working with your hands, be a skilled trades worker and don't depend on your money coming from a factory. You know, depending on coming from a corporation that needs skilled trade workers, depending on the mom and pop stores that need skilled trade workers. And still at the same time, when you're a skilled trade worker, you need to have your backup plans. This is the way of the now and tomorrow and forever. <laughs> That's just how it is in the United States right now. You know, you can, it's, you know, because you got to do right by your money. You can vote Democrat and Republican all you want. But if you do not look at the United States from an economic perspective and how you can make your money work, work for you when you lose your job, because eventually in the digital age, you and I will lose our jobs eventually because it's just it's just that thing that we have to have in our mind. Nobody is safe. <laughs> No matter how much education you got, nobody's safe. Every single person from my generation on down needs to plan for generations and generations and not just for the weekend, okay? We're going into 2019 and my mind is already on 2025. I already have 2019 planned out and I'm looking forward to it. One of my goals, I do, uh, one of the goals that I do not have and that I'm not really looking forward to is looking for another job and hoping that I do not lose my current job. Been there, done that, wrote a book, wrote a couple books and i'm sure a lot of you out there have done the same thing i'm good been there done that i'm trying to move forward forward thinking here everybody we all need to have forward thinking participations you know partnerships relationships with the right people calculated business risks things that have changed in my life and perspective all those things is is this it just circling in my mind on a regular basis you know netflix and any other source of entertainment doesn't have any significant effect on my life and it never will youtube has had more of an effect on my life than entertainment in a real big positive way why because people obtain a lot of great information from watching youtube and i've obtained a lot of great information from watching youtube you know one of the things that i hope that the parts of the united states that are being affected by gm and companies like dm uh, gm's decisions um making is that i hope that they make the right decisions in regards to trying to bring new industries to those areas you know because a lot of those small towns are just going to continuously dwindle and start disappearing you know because millennials and generation z people are moving to areas where the job market is booming no matter where it is if they they need a job they're going to go if you build it they will come <laughs> It's that old saying, if you build it, they will come, you know, but if you don't, if you're still living off of the old, old, old fashioned ways of, of uh, bringing industries to an area, then it's just not going to work, you know, and it's going to take everybody. It's going to take everybody, no matter how you look at it, no matter how you slice and dice it, it was going, it is going to take everybody to, to push us in the right direction and putting, uh, you know, new perspectives in place, especially when it comes to financial intelligence. It needs to be really needs to be in, in public school in our and and definitely around your friends and families. Around you know, we just had Thanksgiving, we got Christmas, it needs to be at the dinner table. You know, we discuss everything else it needs that that definitely needs to be discussed on a regular basis. On a regular basis, financial intelligence. That's just my personal opinion. Capital capitalism in the United States is a beautiful thing. I love it. But if you have to, to if you have to try to start playing the game in the right way. That is that is my analysis on it. You have to start playing the capitalism game the right way. And because capitalism, and my favorite uh, YouTuber says this all the time, it's a horse and jockey race on a daily basis. Every time you get up and go out, and get on the grind, whatever, unless you're just homeless and you're just sitting around picking your nose, that's a different story. But those of us, you know, who do not start off with wealth, and that's most people in the United States of America and people, obviously people around the world, you begin as the horse. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with being a horse, you know? <laughs> you get out there, we get it going, right? But that doesn't mean we have to die as the horse. 
you know we are all meant to become some sort of a jockey in this rap race this just this, this race of capitalism you know but we have to change our thinking and change our actions and change our and actually have some sort of executions you know have execution plans is great but if you don't actually act upon those executions and they mean nothing they are worthless you know just coming home and vegging out in front of the television every day after work that's not going to fly okay because all it's going to mean is okay you're going to have your job it's not going to build anything of real economic value and that's what you should be all about nowadays because everybody's in has in some sort of a way has a possibility of losing a job no matter if they're the best employee of the freaking year all that is irrelevant get that out of your mind new new plan new new way of thinking new way of living you know and i end this video off with saying you know this if you're going if you if you're not trying to play the game then you're going to lose you know i don't play to lose i play i play to win when i play something i do play the win that's why i don't play video games because I, I could care less about it that's why i don't go to football games because i i'm not playing uh, you know so but when i when i when i when it comes to my business I'm playing to win. I'm not playing to lose. And I hope you guys do the same thing at the same time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please check out my uh, online store that I have with Shopify. And uh, definitely see you guys later. Have a great and productive week. Take care.